Hi, I'm going to be doing one of our nanotechnology demos for you today. And I'd just like to start off by having you look at these two pieces of metal. Um, I'll describe them for you. They're similar in the base, but one of them has a disc on top. It's also a metal. It looks pretty shiny, like it might have been polished or something. It feels a little bit smoother than the other one. Uh, so we're going to do a test with these. I'm just putting these two plastic tubes over the top so I can drop these two metal balls on them without it going everywhere. Uh, these are just metal ball bearings. And I'm going to hold them up here and let go at the exact same time and just watch what happens. Hmm. As you can see, this one stopped right away, and this one with the, um, the disc on top is still going. Just to make sure that it's not some funky balls I have here, let's switch the balls and try the same thing again. Ah yes, it must be the metal disc on the bottom. So right here, without the disc on it, is aluminum. So this is what like cans are made of, it's a very common household metal. And when I drop the ball on it, it loses energy pretty quickly, it makes a couple bounces and stops. This right here has an aluminum base, but the disc on top is what we call amorphous metal. And amorphous means without shape. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what is actually missing from here. Um, and when I drop the ball onto this one, it loses energy also, but not as quickly. It goes for much longer before it actually comes to a rest. The second bounce is much higher and on until it <laughs> eventually stops. And so this difference that we can see um, you know, with our eyes on the macro scale is actually due to a difference that is on the nano scale. So even though we can't see, um, you know, they look fairly similar, there's actually something quite different about these. And it has to do with the atomic structure of each of these metals. So I'm going to show you a model that we created to represent the atoms in each of these metals. Ooh. <laughs> It does anymore. All right, so this right here represents the aluminum. So this would be the um, sort of your everyday metal. And these gold balls I have in here, um, they're all the same size, and these represent atoms. Atoms are the basic building block that make up everything, pretty much. Um, so if you can see this, hopefully, um, what I have here is the atoms over here are all lined up in rows and columns, and the atoms over here also lined up in rows and columns. Um, and this is what we call um, a crystal. So regular metal is polycrystalline, which means that it's made up a lot of a lot of crystals kind of shoved together. And um, what, what a crystal is, is it has order, which is what I mean by um, these atoms being lined up, that we call it order. And so over here, they're all lined up against this side, and these ones are lined up against this side. So we've got order over here. This would be a crystal on this side, and more order over here, but something's going on in the middle there. And I don't know if you can see, but they're not really lined up. They're lined up um, on this side with this edge, and this side with this edge, but in the middle, they can't quite fit together. And this right here is actually what we call a grain boundary. That goes in between the crystals or grains. And this is actually what dissipates the ener most of the energy in here. The crystals can actually slip by each other and the energy dissipates much faster with this one. Now I've got another uh, model and this is of the amorphous model, the one that took a lot longer to stop bouncing. And I can try to get these to line up. I try to get them to line up all day, but they won't. <laughs> Um, sometimes you can get, you know, five or six to line up, just because, um, you know, they, they will have short range order, but they won't have any long range order. Like, you won't have any long rows that go all the way across or anything. And, um, so because we don't have that order, we actually won't have any crystals or grains, and because we don't have crystals or grains, we won't have the grain boundaries to dissipate the energy. And so by looking at this, why don't... Why can't we have crystals in this one? Well, the, the gold balls are the same size as these gold balls here, but there's actually silver balls in this one, which represent a different kind of atom, and they're bigger. 
So because we have the two different size atoms, they're not able to form um, any sort of pattern that can repeat. And this is what we would call the amorphous metal. And uh, so the energy will not absorb into this metal, which is this one, um, as quickly. I have some pictures of actual um, crystals and grain boundaries to show you. Um, the one on the top right here, they each step down, um, getting closer and closer. The one on the top is 15 micrometers, and they look kind of, it's up here, they look kind of like uh, cobblestones. <laughs> it's actually zoomed in really small. Um, these were taken with a very high-powered microscope, and these are actually crystals or grains. And the next, the one in the middle is one micrometer, and it zooms in on one of the grain boundaries, like I was talking about, which is one of the gaps between the crystals. And it just kind of looks like a line. And then the one on the bottom here is, uh, the scale is actually uh, one nanometer. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to see that there are uh, atoms. Those are actual, those little dots are actually atoms. And the top up here are, um, they're lined up in one direction, and the ones on the bottom are lined up in a different direction. And as with the model I was showing you, these are actually two uh, different uh, crystals or grains, and you can see in between the two crystals, uh, the atoms, like our model, don't really line up there. They kind of get all jumbled up, and that is the actual grain boundary. So. Um, I have another representation here that um, we can uh, that I can show you. These are actually similar to these two uh, pieces, but they're made out of glass. And this is a model that represents uh, these two. I'm sure you can guess which one will bounce longer. Um, so I have two glass balls this time that I'm going to do similarly. I will drop. So as you would expect, <laughs> the one that has the very bumpy surface with lots of grooves and ridges uh, drops, uh, stops, stops dropping, stops bouncing uh, much sooner because it kind of rattles around on the edges. And this one, the smooth one, will bounce for much longer. So these are analogous. Uh, this one would represent the amorphous metal that's much smoother. It doesn't have. Uh, any of the grain boundaries to dissipate the energy. And this bumpy one is, um, would represent the grains and grain boundaries of the aluminum. So this amorphous metal is actually uh, used in some applications. It was first developed for, uh, or first researched for use um, in, with, with armor for soldiers. You can imagine that you wouldn't want your you know, if a bullet's going to hit you, you wouldn't want the energy to be transferred to what you're wearing or your body. You want it to maintain in the bullet. Um, it's actually so this the because of this atomic structure of the amorphous metal. There are actually a bunch of kind of unique properties about it. One of them, like I showed you, it doesn't absorb energy the same, um, which also makes it very resilient to breaking. It was not going to break as easily or bend as easily as like something like aluminum. Um, so one of the most common uh, uses of amorphous metal is actually in flip cell phones. So you can imagine, um, you know, you're flipping your cell phone, your cell phone open, you know, if you like to text, maybe 100 times a day or something for a year. And um, that hinge, it's a metal on metal collision happening in that hinge. So that might start breaking down. So uh, what they do is put a little piece of amorphous metal right in the hinge where it contacts so that it's more uh, resilient to breaking. Also, uh, it's used in fancy uh, baseball bats, sporting equipment, uh, such as golf clubs and stuff. Uh, if, you know, if you're hitting a baseball uh, with a baseball bat, you would want the energy to stay with the ball as it reflects off the bat instead of you know, going back up into your arms and your body. Uh, also, pretty fancy USB drives that you can like run over with your car and stuff if you have some really important data that you'd like to keep very, very safe. Uh, so yeah, hope you've learned a little bit about amorphous metal and thank you very much.